I'm just gonna talk really about like two things today. Uh, one is just gonna be kind of like how my journey has been in my career. Um, and then out of that, I'll try to draw some like principles I learned that's like applicable to anyone, re regardless of whether you go into filmmaking or not. Uh, two, I've been asked to talk a bit about the filmmaking process. So we'll talk about, you know, the different stages of that. Um, and then three, I guess we're having a Q and A. You can ask me any questions, any stories I have uh, down to tell those as well. And then lastly, we'll have like a workshop uh, with you all. Um, so yeah, I'll talk a bit about my journey. Um, so one day I was on set with one of the artists I was working with um, and the manager of the artist. So usually I'm like intimidated by them. And I don't really talk to them. Uh, but this guy, like, he was pretty cool. He manages, like, Vince Staples, uh, Dave Chappelle, and, like, a bunch of big names. I just found him to be, like, a curious guy. So I just was, like, we had some downtime between the shoot, and I was just, like, hey, like, how do you end up managing, like, Dave Chappelle? How does that work? Um, and so, like, the quote he told me is, like, hey, you know that movie Forrest Gump? Like, that's, like, my movie. And he just kind of told me about all these instances where he just, like, happened to be at the right place at the right time. Um, and I think like for me and myself, like it's kind of been like that as well, where like things just kind of happen and I'm like, oh, sweet. Like a lot of this wasn't planned. Um, and I'm just kind of prefacing everything with this because uh, just because this is kind of how like my career panned out doesn't necessarily mean yours has to pan out this way. Everyone's like career paths are so different uh, and diverse and that's cool. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to preface that, uh, as, so you're not like, oh, that didn't happen. That's not working for me. Well, I have to do that. Like, that's not the case at all. Uh, things can work out. And I think if you just like, you know, keep working hard, uh, meet, you know, people and just have fun along the way, uh, it can kind of work out. Uh, so my journey actually starts, uh, in college. Uh, this is like a calculus, like thermodynamics equation. Uh, so I actually was an engineer in college, um, and that was kind of the plan. Um, and I'm from Houston, Texas, so the plan was like go study chemical engineering, co go back and work in oil. Um, if you can tell by this equation, it's very complicated and difficult. My brain couldn't handle it. <laughs> so like my junior year, I was like, all right, I can't do this anymore. Um, and so I went to my like school counselor person, and he like, you know, helped you like graduate on time and I was just kind of like hey man like I don't want to do this anymore it's too hard like what can I do to graduate on time and I don't want to of course like do any school I don't want to pay for it and so he was like hey remember that like one film class you like took as like a joke like that's it that's the course and I was like all right bet I'll do that um and I think for me at the time it was just kind of like a lot of people you graduate with whatever degree you end up working you don't even use it. So I was like, that's fine. Um, so that was kind of the plan. Um, and then I started class and I was like super behind. I'm like with a bunch of freshmen. I'm like, it's my second semester junior year. They're like, oh, I've been like making movies since I was seven. I was like, dude, I chose this like seven hours ago. This is bad. And they're like talking about stuff I don't know. And so I was like, man, I really need to catch up. Uh, so for me, I was like, I need to get a lot uh, as much experience as possible. Uh, so for me, I don't know why, but the obvious route was to go on Craigslist. <laughs> and uh, I started taking all these like super sketch, like weird job, jobs off of Craigslist. Uh, usually they were like some gangster rappers in like Detroit. They're like, hey, shoot my music video for like 500 bucks or like some like local mom and pop restaurant. They're like, hey, we need a video of this. And so I was like, hey, if you hired me, I'll do it for free. And like, those were the jobs I took. Um, and I think like a weird thing that happened was um, while like a lot of my friends were like doing their narrative student short films, uh, I was doing these like weird music videos and I guess like local commercials or whatever. And when it when ended up happening was I kind of started learning all these like skills I didn't realize I needed. So I was like working with clientele. I was like communicating with them. Uh, I had to like work with a schedule. I had to work with like a really low budget. And those were all things that like became applicable skills. Uh, and then like, you don't really necessarily learn those on those student short films because they're kind of like, you shoot them whenever, they always go over time. Uh, a lot of things can happen. And so that, I think those like skills ended up helping me when I started interviewing for jobs 
uh, that like landed me my first job because during the interview, I could like answer all these questions about every project and how I pulled it off and different things like that. And I think they were like happy with that and impressed. And so that's how I like landed my first job at the local NBC station in Detroit. Uh, and there I was like creating like, just like really interesting stuff. <laughs> uh, and so I think I found this clip on like YouTube it's off Conan and it pretty much like describes like what that time period was like. Um, but for me, I was like, man, I made it like this is it. Uh, but we could just kind of watch this and this is kind of like, I found this kind of funny. Uh, anyways, that's like, uh, so that commercial, like I literally work on that. <laughs> um, and there's like a bunch of other like terrible jingle ones that I had to work on. Those are kind of like these like legacy local Detroit commercials. Uh, so I worked on those and I did like a bunch of like billboard ID ads, which are like in between, maybe if you watch like a football game between commercial breaks, it'll be like, this game is brought to you by the Ford Motor Company. Like I, I made those. Uh, so that's kind of what I was doing. Um, and I was kind of, I felt like a little stuck. And then uh, one day basically this like job came across my desk and it was like this doc for, um, some like woman, uh, her, her son was like KIA in I think it was Afghanistan or Iraq. And I was like, oh, this is kind of like a cool story. Like I should definitely do that. And so I went to my manager, I was like, hey, I'd love to do this story. And she was like, no, like they're not paying us and we're not doing that. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, but part of me was like, this might be the coolest thing that like I ever work on cause I'm doing stuff like that. I was like, all right, I'm just gonna do it. So I like went out that weekend. I like guilt tripped a bunch of like my coworkers into helping me. We shot it, I gave it to them. And it was like, I was real hush hush about it. And then like, they liked it so much and it kind of went like local mini viral. And they came back to the station and they were like, hey, we love that. Thank you so much for doing that. And then they were like, what do you mean? We didn't do that. And they're like, yes, you did. And eventually like find it, it found its way back to me. And I was like, oh shoot, like, well, it was a good run while well, it lasted, uh, but that ended up getting me promoted and um, I got like into a different like position. And that actually opened up the doors for me into getting now into agency work where agencies were talking to me. And then that led to like more uh, work as a production company. Um, so I think the takeaway for me was like in the beginning of your career, like sometimes you really don't get to like choose the coolest jobs sometimes like you know you have to take jobs on craigslist but i think like something that i always tried to do is like you know usually when you get those jobs like sometimes you just want to take the paycheck and focus on something else but i tried to like embrace those limitations and like all right well i'm doing a freaking local grocery store commercial like how can i make this the coolest thing possible or i'm you know doing this like stupid local ad thing how can i make this the coolest thing possible and I think uh, having that like mindset is kind of what opened the door for me. And I was kind of able to like climb the ladder uh, relatively fast. So I don't know if that's just kind of like one takeaway I got. Okay, right, this one. Uh, so at this point I was working at a production company. Um, I was mainly working as an editor. And by this time I'm doing like, you know, commercials and stuff and it's kind of normal um, and then one of the directors at the production company, like I had talked to him about like, yeah, I, I want to do like narrative short films and stuff. Like I want to eventually do that. And he's like, dude, you're always talking about it. You just need to go do it. I was like, yeah, I will one day. Uh, and then he like left the room and then he came back and he was like, hey, so there's this thing called a 48 hour film festival. And basically you have to like make a movie within 48 hours. Um, he's like, hey, I just signed you up for it. I paid the fee. I hope you don't have any plans this weekend because that's what you're doing. Good luck and tell me how it goes. So that weekend I had to like go shoot the short film by myself. And I just like casted a bunch of like kids <laughs> who like lived on the street that I knew. Uh, and we just made this really weird film. We just like watch the intro. It's like pretty like cringe and weird. But I just thought I'd like show you like where I started.
quarter. Can you go to the store for me really quick and get some milk? Yes, Mom. Cool, I, that's enough, I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, clearly, like we're in some bombed out house and we're just like in the streets of Detroit just shooting the stuff. Um, and I think like what happened is we did that film. I was like, all right, that was cool, whatever. And then uh, it played at the festival or whatever. And clearly looking at it, we didn't get any like critics awards, but uh, like it, it was kind of a really hilarious stupid film and like a lot of the audience liked it and so we actually ended up winning like the audience award um and that actually like opened a lot of doors for me because I started like meeting all these other filmmakers uh also I met those guys and that music is actually like some of the kids that they made um and so now like I started meeting all these filmmakers everyone's like down to just like we're all kind of in the same place in our career so we're all just like helping each other on each other's like film sets so they'd help me on my shoots. I'd help them on their shoots. And these are just like some of the photos of how we like pulled out some of the stuff we did. Um, and like sometimes like if you look in that middle picture, there's like a guy laying on the floor. Like that's the sound guy. And we're like, we couldn't afford like two mics. And so we needed someone in the middle. So he just like laid on the floor. And that's just kind of like how we pulled it off in the early days. Um, but yeah, just kind of like finding friends, uh, having that like kind of team just really made a difference. Um, so after that, we just started kind of making more, I was able to just like churn out more stuff, like kind of like a machine. Um, so I think yeah, a big takeaway is just like kind of like finding your community, finding your tribe, uh, especially with like social media and stuff today, you can even find them like that's not even in your same city. Uh, you can really connect with a lot of people. I think this is essentially what networking is. Uh, but like, basically it's just like making friends that you vibe with and then like having fun, going doing the things you love. Um, and then like, I just wanted to show a few more examples of like stuff you can do. So this one was like, I was driving home one day. I saw some like carnival thing. I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I'd like to shoot there. And then I was like, what can I shoot there? And I was talking to another friend and he was doing some like graphic design stuff for like some like fashion brand or something. I was like, oh, what if I shoot a fashion thing there? And then I knew like some girls and some of my friends, I was like, oh, like, why don't you guys like model in it? They're like, we're not models. I was like, yeah, but I think you can do it. So we just went out there. And then like the guy who was the camera guy, like happened to know the security guy at the fair. He's like, sure, you guys can shoot whatever. Um, and there's like fireworks that go off at nine. You should definitely shoot those. We're like, for sure. And then we just ended up shooting this like short fashion thing. Um, and it's like, I don't know. I just, I guess I'm just trying to paint a picture. Like things are doable with like just your friends and just some ideas. So this is kind of how like that came out. This is like a super cut down version. There's like a minute long version, but living somewhere, but. <laughs> So yeah, like even something like that, like it's super doable. Like the crew was technically two people, me and a dude with camera. Uh, I just paid for like the uh, amusement park fees and the rides and stuff and just like four of my friends. Um, so that's like something else that's doable. Um, and I think this one was one of those like big, just like scrap projects for me, basically. So I was doing a bunch of those. And then one of the short films I was working on I ended up casting the daughter of like uh, a creative director at an agency. Um, I didn't even know. And then like, he told me, I was like, oh shoot, that's cool. 
And then he showed up on set and I was like, oh crap, like he's gonna watch me and like my friends just like be a mess on set. And so we shot the short film and I guess he kind of like liked it, what he saw. And then he, him and his partner approached me and they're like, hey, like at the agency, like we, wor we work on a lot of stuff and sometimes we pitch ideas that the clients don't like, but we love. We'd like to do one of those ideas that we think would be like cheaper to do. Would you be interested in directing it? I was like, sure. So I think it was like 300 bucks total, most of that being like pizza to feed these kids and their parents. Uh, and we just shot this like, I guess it's like a hockey commercial. I don't know what it is. It's, you know, it was their idea, but we just shot this thing. Um, so here's that. And then I'll kind of tell you like what happened with that. Come on, Jimmy, you got this, son. Pencil, some paper. Focus. Come on, Jimmy, focus. 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 Take the puck. There you go. Skate. Skate. Pass it. You call that a pass? What are you doing? You missed the puck. Come on. Um, so, yeah, we did that. And then we were like, all right, that's like, okay. And they're like, I don't know. We feel like there's something here. Like, let's try to find it at home. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, we're like, maybe we can sell it to somewhere. So we went on LinkedIn and we, like, basically, like, stalked a bunch of people um and then eventually like i found this dude who was like the president of youth hockey at usa hockey um and he had like posted a bunch of videos that he was a part of in detroit at the ice rink and i was like dude if he likes those like he's gonna love ours um and so we just reached out we just cold emailed him and i just told them to do it because they actually have like titles and i'm just like some kid uh, so they like sent an email um, and then they were like, oh, cool. Like we might be interested. And there was a bunch of like talk back and forth about like, hey, like technically, legally, we have to buy it from you. How much you want to sell it? So I think we sold it for like a dollar because uh, we just wanted to like, I guess, get it off our hands. And then that was it and nothing happened. And then like months later on like a Saturday morning, I got a phone call. Uh, and it was like one of the moms and she was like, oh my God, we saw the commercial. We love it. And I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, we saw the hockey commercial. We saw it's on ESPN. And basically like, I guess they didn't tell us, but like they like played it throughout, I think like throughout the summer during the junior Olympics. So that like this like weird $300 thing became like my first national broadcast television spot. Um, of course, you know, that opened other doors. Uh, but yeah, just another like case study of like kind of what can happen. And just like when you, in the beginning, you know, there's just kind of this like filmmaking approach. It's like you use what you have um, and you can still make stuff happen. Um, and I think during this time, especially as I was doing a lot of stuff, um, a lot of times like I hear like filmmakers talk about it and their Q and A's where they're like, go find your voice. I just, I kind of never really knew what that meant. And I think the way I learned what it meant was like, basically like you'll go make something and you're trying to replicate something you saw and you like, uh, it's going to suck, uh, most of it, but like, there's going to be a little something there where you're like, oh, that part was cool. The rest of it sucks. And then you go make another one and you remember that. And now you make something else. And now like, 10% of it is good while 90% sucks. And then it becomes 15%. And slowly as you do that, you start to realize like you have this like innate style or outlook or kind of uh, feel to your projects. And I think that's what like finding your voice means. But I think a lot of it is just like kind of like through a lot of trial and error, just like kind of learning to uh, find your voice and like get your style down. And so this is like a cool talk that I found uh, that there's a guy, uh, there. There's like, they're called the Duplass brothers and they're kind of like independent filmmakers. Um, and he talks a little bit about uh, this in his like South by Southwest keynote speech. Um, so especially like if you're like someone who wants to do film and you're like stuck, you're like, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. I feel like he gives some cool advice. He's just very like specific because he's trying to make it like helpful as possible. But I think there's like principles in there that you can kind of take away. Um, Starts at 6.52. We'll just watch, like, we're not going to watch, like, the entire hour talk here. Um, it really doesn't matter what your movie looks like. If you have a voice, if you have something interesting to say, 
um, they will like you and they will program you. So step one, if you are nowhere like I was, is <clears throat> the $3 short film. I recommend making one of these every weekend with your smartest group of friends who want to be filmmakers. They don't have to be film savvy. You want a group of like four or five people, someone who's ideally charismatic to be your lead actor, and then just smart kind of interesting people to help you curate this thing. It should be a one scene, five minutes. Ideally, it's comedic because those program well at film festivals. And uh, short films also program well, like short shorts. That's really key. Um, and your first ones are going to suck. Mine did. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you'll make a great one. There's some people that do that. I hate those people. Um, and, and, but there'll be like a little nugget when you show your friends. And they'll be like, this is four minutes and 58 seconds of garbage. But that little giggle you guys had right there was interesting. So then you expand on that. You cut everything else out. You start honing in on it. And somewhere you're going to discover that you have something unique to offer. And it usually lies in those weird conversations you are having with your friends, your loved ones, your siblings, between like midnight and 3 in the morning when everybody's loopy and or drunk or stoned. And you are laughing uncontrollably because you share this unique sense of humor about something that one of your friends did or you did. And at the risk of saying you should make a self-indulgent film for your first movie, you should absolutely make a self-indulgent film for your first movie because that's your special stuff. That's like your judge. And when you tap into that, you show it to your friends, they'll be honest with you, and you're going to find it might be two weeks later, it might be two months later, it might be two years of doing this that you have something unique to offer. And this is going to be the start of your career. So this whole time, you should be having a really strong day job to take care of your st Cool. So that's just like, you know, a little advice. Um, and, you know, I don't think like you necessarily have to do like something comedic or those specific notes, but I think there's like a general takeaway there. Um, I hope that just kind of like encourages y'all that, you know, you can like start, like I just started on Craigslist and somehow like, you know, it worked out for me. Um, and I think like really anyone can do it. If you just kind of like put, you know, your work into it. Uh, you can really find uh, your kind of voice, your lane, and, you know, make a career out of doing a uh, film. Um, so I guess, yeah, recap, you know, one, you know, do it better, you know, take those crappy projects that no one wants, kill them, crush them. Um, two, find your tribe, find your, like, network, make friends, you know, start, like, making the stuff you guys like to do. And then three, uh, go fail, you know, uh, go make some mistakes and go find your voice. Um, so that's just pretty much it for like how my journey was. And I guess like three takeaways I took out, I took out of it as I kind of reflected. Um, we're going to now shift um, minds here into like more of like the filmmaking process. This will be more lecture-like. Um, and there's basically kind of like four stages that I broke it up into. There's really like three pre-production, pr production and post. But I feel like development is kind of its own thing. Maybe that's where some, some people are starting. Um, so I'll just kind of talk about all four differently and I'll just kind of like run through these. Um, and then throughout the case, like, this is like one of my favorite projects I've done, which is like a music video for this artist called Amir Van, um, and his song, I don't fit in and that's okay. So just to kind of lift the hood off of the mystery of production, I'm just literally going to show like actual documented things from that shoot. So you can like see how things work, um, you know uh the process so first stage development i basically call this like the ideation stage uh there's a few things that that's happening here really one you're ideating uh, you're coming up with an idea uh this i think this kind of runs across the board for whether it's commercial music videos uh narratives um you may not necessarily participate in this stage as a director like you know maybe for uh, a commercial like you're not part of the ideating stage uh, but you might be part of the treatment stage. But first, you know, you ideate, you come up with an idea. Second, there's some sort of script or screenplay that's written. Uh, third, um, then there's a treatment. Uh, I think a lot of people aren't familiar with that. So I'll kind of go through that. Uh, that's like an important thing that a director does. And it's basically a document that has like images and words. And you basically like pitch your vision for the film. And then fourth, of course, is the pitching process. Sometimes you're talking to the label, sometimes you're talking to the artist themselves, sometimes you're talking to 
a commercial agency and the client. Sometimes you're talking to the studio. And then last but not least, you get greenlit, which basically means like they're like, okay, cool, we're on board. Here's the money, go make it now. So that's kind of the development process. Uh, so for music video, this music video, like this is the first thing I got. So this is just like a screenshot of an email I got. Um, and it says like, you know, Junbei, the, the head of production likes to, I don't know, he calls me pimp for some reason, let us know pimp, showcasing your range on this one. He doesn't spell my name right, but it's okay. <laughs> um, and then basically they just give you like, here's the artist, here's the track title. Here, uh, I blacked out the link, but here's the link to the song. Here's the label, here's the video commissioner, here's the budget, here's where they're shooting dates when they're shooting and this is when the treatments do and then usually below they'll have like here's some like maybe they have like here's some ideas the the artist has or the management team has here's some references here's a link to that so sometimes they'll do that sometimes they're like we don't care like do whatever you want to pitch and sometimes they'll you know even tell you specifics with like oh they want to dance in it they have some dancers they want to wear this outfit uh they might send a board an image images of like a mood board uh, but they'll just kind of give you some information for you to kind of work off of. Um, and full disclosure, you don't really have to adhere to them. This one, I totally ignored <laughs> their creative direction, which I don't recommend, but for this one, I felt was appropriate. And so that's just kind of what I did. Um, and then from there, I start working on a treatment. And so these are just some of the pages pulled from that treatment. And basically, kind of like I mentioned, it's just like a bunch of images and words to kind of set the tone and the mood uh, to give them an idea, like a visual of like, what is this thing gonna be? So this is like, you know, like a gas station at night, which is where most of it takes place. Uh, on the first page, I, I kind of give like a little statement about like what I feel about the song, why I wrote this idea, how it connects. Um, and I just have like this image of like this car on fire at a gas station because like basically my idea is like just a bunch of crazy stuff's gonna happen. They're all wild and they all seem like independent, but somehow they all kind of like come together and connect. Uh, and that's just kind of like my pitch um, for them. Then you're gonna have like, and, it, and really every treatment has its own thing. You can write it the way you want. So you best communicate the idea, but basically I'm gonna have a bunch of setups like, hey, like, you know, like when I was living in Detroit, one time I saw this like homeless dude drive up in this like motorized shopping cart fill up his gas tank and drive off. And I was like, that was just the wildest thing ever. So there was like an idea of that. There was this idea of like this like homeless guy who kept like trying to like light his cigarette at the gas station. And there was gonna be this, all these people getting sprayed by gasoline and then this explosion. And then like, there's some lyrics mentioning like tall white tees and saggy pants. So we just kind of like wanna make fun of that. And there's all these kind of elements that I'm like writing about as well, like showing them pictures. And just trying to like get this image in their heads about like what I'm trying to do. And there's more pages, but I just, you know, we don't need to go through all of them. So there's that. So that's kind of like pretty much the development stage for music videos. Then you get on a call, you pitch it, you talk about it, maybe there's some edits, and then ultimately they'll be like, all right, cool, we want to go with you. We green light you and the project's on. So now the next stage is called like pre-production. Um, usually in the industry, it's called like pre-pro. So if they're saying pre-pro, that's what they mean. And this is basically like the planning stage. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on here. Uh, so there's like a shot list, a storyboard. Uh, you got to get your crew together. You got to cast. Uh, there's something called like a location scout, a tech scout. We'll talk about that. You want to get your scheduling down and basically any other logistical things you're handling here. So for instance, for this one, like we needed to find a shopping cart with like a motor on it. So we like strangely found some dude who does that. Like that's what he does as a job. So we had him like build a custom one for us. Um, so this is just like an example of like a shot list. Uh, this is what like the creative director sent to me after I sent my idea. They're like, oh, we like that. Like here's some shot ideas. Um, and this is just to show you like they don't have to be the most sophisticated looking images, you know? Like they can look like this. Um, and then you'll see in the music video, like none of these shots are actually like in there, but they kind of set the groundwork for, you know, what the feel for the thing is going to be. Um, and just as contrast, I also brought in storyboard from another project I did. This is a commercial. And then you'll see here, these are much more like specific. They're pretty much like down to the T. So you'll see like on top, that's like storyboard on the bottom. That's the actual shot. Um, and you're like literally going off the storyboards. Um, and so like, 
you know, they can, they, they can be a variety. Um, and basically, you know, honestly, I don't like storyboards. Uh, I feel like it kind of limits me. Like sometimes I like to walk into a location and I like to see it and I'm like, oh, I kind of want to change how I want to shoot it. Uh, but then they are useful because especially when you're on a, like the Japan Airlines one, I think like the crew was like 40 plus. I don't know, you know, there's just like a lot of people on set and everyone has a job and they're all trying to understand like what's inside my head. And so sometimes like having a storyboard helps. Now, like everyone can see that the, the wardrobe knows, oh, they need to wear this. Uh, the art designer knows, oh, we need a desk. We need a chair. We need paper. Casting director knows, oh, we need four people. Um, and it, and then, and then the DP knows like, oh, this is how the shot looks like. So it kind of helps everyone just kind of get on the same page in a really, you know, short amount of time instead of me like sharing words with each single person. Um, so that's just kind of the advantage of the storyboard. And it really helps you kind of plan out your shots so you're not wasting time on set. Because once you're on set, it's just like you're, you're, you're racing against the clock every time. And it, it's just, it just gets chaotic and things slip through all the time. So the more you have a plan in the beginning, uh, it really helps. Uh, then you got to get your crew together. This is just kind of, this is what's called a call sheet. Uh, you get this usually the day before a shoot. It just lays out like, here's what time you're showing up. Here's where we're showing up. Here's where we're shooting. Things like, here's the nearest hospital in case an accident happens. Here's what the weather looks like. Um, and this is just to give you an idea of like how many people are on set. So on the left, and I blacked out like everyone's emails and phone numbers, just, you know, confidential stuff uh but like on the left you'll see like that's that's just the crew uh and on the right that's like talent that's the artist uh that's the label side like they will be on, on the shoot uh the stylist their personal stylist um and so this is just like a lot of people on a set and that's just i just kind of wanted to give you an idea of like how much work goes into just making these things happen um so that's just kind of to give you an idea of like you know when you're getting crew uh, this is kind of what happens uh, at this level. Uh, then you got to cast talent. Um, the auditioning process is always fun. Sometimes it's like, you know, like how you see it in the movies, you're sitting in a room, people walk in, they say a line, they leave. Um, you kind of like, honestly, you can do whatever you want. Uh, the way I cast talent is I, usually there's like an important part in the role that they need to demonstrate to me that they can do. And I'm sure if they can do that, they can do the rest. Um, and so, during this time, it was during COVID. Um, so if you actually like look at this crew sheet at the bottom on the left side, you'll see like COVID officer. That's like a new role that's appeared. And basically they maintain COVID safe standards on set. Um, and there's like, when you go on set, they test you, they make sure you're, you're, you're negative and then you're allowed to like be on set. Um, and so they were all done virtually. And so for one of the roles, like I needed a police officer taking away our artists and not letting other people talk to him. And so this guy, he had a very interesting audition day where he like dropped my name in it and he like did this like news thing. Uh, it's not the best quality. They, they usually look different. This one, I just had to like pull off my phone. Uh, but I just thought this was like an interesting one that I thought kind of like was creative. No, you cannot ask any questions of the suspect. June Bay is considered armed and dangerous. So I just thought that I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. That's interesting. Uh, you'll see he got the job. He's in the music video. Um, but yeah, casting is another important thing. And I think a lot of time, sometimes for like younger directors, and I definitely did this when I was starting, um, I would make the mistake of like getting someone who looks the part, but not, not, necessarily, not necessarily can like do the part. Um, and I think sometimes when you do that, like you don't get the performance you need. Uh, so that's just like a thing to like look out for, but casting is of course another important part. Like they're the people on camera. Um, and then this is like pictures of a location tech scout. And basically what that is, is you're going to that physical locations you're gonna shoot at before the shoot date, ideally during the time you're gonna shoot there, uh, just to get a layout of the land. So if you look at the top left picture, basically that's kind of the key departments. On the left, you'll see the producer, that's the kill. Uh, kind of towards the middle, the woman, that's Wes. She's the production designer. She's like head of art team. On the right, that's Trevor. He's my first assistant director. And then off camera, who's taking out the pictures who you don't see is the, is the DP director of photography, that's Justin. And the point of going is like, you go and you lay stuff out. So for instance, like Nikhil, the producer, he's looking at things like logistics, uh, like what, what do we need to change? How are the things operating at this time? Do we need to move stuff around for safety? Stuff like that. 
uh, Wes, who's in the middle, she's looking at things like, okay, like for instance, a picture on the top right, that's one of the shots. There's a lot of logos. How do I cover that up? And how do I need to change the space to make it look like what we need? And then Trevor on the right, who's the first assistant director, he's also kind of a logistical guy. He's looking at things like, okay, we're shooting here. Where are we going to put the trucks? Where are we going to put the parking? Where are we going to feed people? Where are we going to put the artists? Where are we going to put the equipment? Um, and he's like looking at all that stuff. Um, and then all together, we're also looking at like specific shots. So like these bottom two shots are shots actually in the music video. Uh, and then me and Justin, Justin's a DP, the director of photography, he's looking at things like, okay, this is how the shot looks like. This is what the lighting looks like. What lighting do I need to bring in? Do I need to turn off the lights? Do I need to change the lights? Uh, what camera equipment do I need to inform my team so we can pull this off? So that's kind of what we're doing there. Um, scheduling. Um, I know this process is long, but this is like an important part of the prepo. Uh, on the left is basically my personal shot list. I break down the music video like by second. I give myself little notes. Sometimes I color code it so I know like different things. And on the right, we have like a more former schedule, like minute by minute. Here's the different setups. The great parts are like, here's how much time it takes to set up for each new setup. And you're basically like, you know, scheduling out your day. So you can kind of just, because when you're on set guys, it's crazy. Like it's just so fast paced. You don't really have time to think. And at that point, you're just kind of like executing everything you've planned. So the more you're planned, the better things go. And of course, like on the day during production, things will go wrong. I've never had things not go wrong. And then the more you're prepared, you can shift, you can like pivot quickly and still like, you know, make things work. So then you go to production, which is basically the do it stage. And I didn't really have any notes for this other than like, you go do it now. You've made a plan, you go do it, you pivot where you can. Um, and sometimes it's crazy and sometimes it's not. And this is just like a video I took off my phone of one shoot we did. And this is just kind of like what it looks like behind the scenes. Just real quiet, like, you know? And then that's Monty shaking his head at me because like usually you're not supposed to have like your phones out on set, you know? But uh, I did. <laughs> Um, and then of course the last stage, this is post, uh, sometimes they call it like the fix it stage. Cause on set, sometimes they'll say things like, oh, we'll fix it in post. Uh, never a good idea as much as you can fix it on set. Uh, but post is where it kind of comes together. You see what you've made. Um, and then you can really enhance things. Uh, so this is kind of like what editing software looks like. This is like a two minute video and you can just see like how many cuts are in it. Um, then there's VFX work for this specific one. There's like an explosion at the end. Of course, we didn't like blow anything up, uh, but like, you know, you add that stuff then you add a camera shake in at the end. Uh, I just thought I'd pull another grab from another commercial just to give you an idea of how sometimes like images can be like stitched together. So there's like on the left, we have, you know, our art team dropping the bags in the middle, we have the actors and then we kind of stitch the two images together to make these like bags appear out of nowhere. Uh, fun fact, and if you guys can ask this later, the guy on the left in the black, uh, he, uh, he's like Margot Robbie's ex, which was interesting, <laughs> uh, which I found out on set, which is kind of interesting. And this is just kind of like another commercial where um, you see kind of how like VFX can, can kind of like look in real time. Uh, this is like- It's that time of year, spring cleaning. You could do it yourself, but there's just too many rooms for just one person. And who knows what secrets each room might hide. Or download to Dooley and hire a local student to be a helping hand. Available on Apple Store and Google Play Store today. Yeah, so that's just like, you know, a quick sample of like, what it can look like in real time. And that one's supposed to like replicate like a bad horror movie. And so like the socks, the clothes, the spaghetti monster, those were all done like in post with like strings and stuff. And then we can clear it out and you know, you get the illusion that things are moving on their own. Um, and of course uh, there's color, just to give you an idea on the left is like the raw footage. On the right is what it looks like after our colors goes through it. Um, and for this one, we, have, we had Gabe Sanchez who did an amazing job. And then last but not least, there's sound, which is super important. 
but for a music video, you barely have any sound work because you're just kind of laying on the track. <laughs> but, uh, it should be mentioned and it's really important to get sound that can really make or break uh, your film. Um, so yeah, that's basically like the production process, just kind of a run through that, you know, ha uh, that happens like over the course of like, I mean, it really depends on maybe like a month, two months, just really fast paced. Uh, and then this is kind of like how it kind of looks at the end with all that happening. So we can just kind of like maybe watch like half of this or something, I don't know. All that stuff put together kind of looks like the VFX and everything. And um, yeah, it was a lot of fun shooting. Actually, it was kind of stressful, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just kind of like the process, what it kind of looks like from uh, start to end. So I think there's a Q&A session now. So yeah. Any questions? Uh, I had a question on like, so how difficult was like with the, with the radio? How was the experience with that? Like, how did you get into that? Wait, sorry, could you say that again? How did, how were you able to get into like, when the, how did the rap, like the guy come up to you? Did you just like, hey, I need to shoot a rap video? And you just, you went from there or how did, how did it go down? Yeah, so I think like kind of during the, uh, the career part, I mean, it's quite a jump. I was showing you like the very early of my career, but like I had a portfolio of work where I had been doing, you know, different hip hop videos and stuff. You know, I have different commercials and they develop over time. Uh, you're just kind of seeing like a drastic, well, even that was like shot like maybe like a year, two years ago. But um, it's just like that building process and slowly and slowly people start to kind of notice and recognize you. And so by that time, um, I was like, that, that, was, that was in LA and basically they had seen some of, you know, my music videos, they liked it. Um, and there's like a thing where I'm basically repped by a production company, which is like, it's kind of a weird thing where they work as an agency and kind of also my manager. And so they contacted them, the label. Um, and then they were like, Hey, like that June, that June guy, who's like kind of that new kid, he does some hip hop videos. Like, would he be interested in this? And then they, and then I got the email from the production company, which is that email I showed you. But uh, yeah, it's not kind of like I reached out to them. They kind of found me, uh, but it's a lot of just like, just doing a lot of work, you know, slowly the eyes that need to see it will see it. And as you keep leveling up, um, you know, you'll see it. And I remember like not too long ago after doing that, I reached out to a bunch of like video commissioners at different labels. Um, and it, at that point it had been like maybe a year in LA and I was still like kind of finding my grounding. Um, and all of them were like, oh dude, I know who you are. Like you did the mirror van video. And so it just kind of like spreads word of mouth like that. Um, so it's just one of those things where you just gotta put in the work, keep doing things, you know, stay focused and slowly but surely like people will start to notice you. And so for me, it started like with that relationship I made with this rapper called like Curtis Roach. He like went viral on TikTok later, but it started with that. That was like my first music video with him and then just keep doing things over the years. And then, you know, then I was able to do that one and, you know, different artists hit me up now. So it just kind of like, just takes time basically. Yeah.